This is Peter here. Today we're gonna learn some amazing facts about rotifers. If you don't know what rotifers are, then stay until the end of this video and I can guarantee that's gonna change. The last couple of weeks I've been recording quite a bit of footage of tiny microorganisms which include tardigrades, nematodes, and now we'll be covering the rotifers. If you enjoy learning some amazing facts about interesting species, I highly recommend you check out my playlist called Educational Nature Videos. Also, if you wanna learn how I took this footage, I've got a tutorial for you. You can check it out right at the end of this video, but I will also leave a link in the description as well. All right, let's focus on the rotifers now. Rotifers, also known as animalcules, are microscopic aquatic microorganisms. Their size usually varies between 0.1 and 0.5 mm, and they are mostly found in freshwater environments with a few species that have adapted to living in brackish water. Some rotifers are free-swimming, while others move by inchworming along the substrate. They were first described in the late 17th century, and approximately 2,200 species are currently known. The word rotifer is derived from Latin and literally means wheelbarrow due to the circular arrangement of moving tiny hair-like structures at the front end which resembles a rotating wheel. Rotifers have bilateral symmetry, meaning they have a single plane of symmetry which is the sagittal or longitudinal plane and come in a variety of different shapes. The body of a rotifer is divided into a head, trunk and foot and is typically somewhat cylindrical. There is a well-developed cuticle which may be thick and rigid, giving the animal a box-like shape, or flexible, giving the animal a worm-like shape. The two most distinctive features of rotifers are the corona and the mastex. The corona is a special ciliated structure on the head. The cilia, which I referred to at the start, are membrane-bound organelles found on most types of cell and are shaped like slender, thread-like projections. The mastex is the muscular pharynx, where the jaws of the rotifers, called trophy, are located. The trunk forms the major part of the body and encloses most of the internal organs. The foot projects from the rear of the trunk and is usually much narrower, giving the appearance of a tail. The cuticle over the foot often forms rings, which makes it look segmented. Many rotifers are also capable of retracting their foot either partially or completely into the trunk. The foot usually ends up in up to four toes, which in certain species can also contain adhesive glands to attach the animal to the substrate. If you watch closely, you can see the foot, which is differently colored in this specimen as well. Let's talk a bit about their digestive system now. The aforementioned coronal cilia's main function is to create a current that sweeps food into the mouth of the rotifer. The mouth opens into a special chewing pharynx, the mastex, which features a powerful muscular wall and contains tiny calcified jaw-like structures called trophy, which are the only fossilizable parts of a rotifer. The shape of the trophy can vary between species depending on their diet. Behind the mastex lies the esophagus, which opens into a stomach where most of the digestion and absorption occurs. The stomach then opens into a short intestine, which terminates in a cloaca. The cloaca is the posterior orifice used for excretion of both urine and feces. Another really interesting fact is that some species can have up to seven salivary glands and their stomach also features two gastric glands which produce digestive enzymes that help break down food. Their nervous system has a relatively simple layout, their brain is small and is located just above the mastex and a number of nerves extend from here throughout the body. This nervous system accounts for approximately 25% of the roughly 1000 cells in a rotifer. They have a pair of short antennae and can also have up to five eyes, which are very simple, sometimes with just a single photoreceptor cell. The cilia on the crown is also used for sensory perception, as those tiny bristles are also sensitive to touch. Rotifers feed mainly on detritus, which is dead organic matter, dead bacteria, algae and protozoans, which are single-celled eukaryotes. They eat particles up to 10 micrometers in size and also play a very crucial role in nutrient recycling. That is why it can be a great choice to have them in fishwater tanks to keep them clean. 
Rotifers can fall prey to a wide variety of organisms such as copepods, comb jellies, jellyfish and even tardigrades. In this footage you can see a rotifer that was very close to a tardigrade and I was secretly hoping for some feeding frenzy to eventually take place but the tardigrade didn't seem to be bothered too much by this little overzealous wiggling rotifer. Rotifers can reproduce either sexually or pathogenetically and some species can also switch between these two methods. They are also sexually dimorphic with the females always being larger than the males even up to 10 times which is impressive. In pathogenetic species, males may be present only at certain times of the year or absent altogether. Pathogenesis also promotes rapid population growth in which diploid eggs develop into females that are clones of their mothers. Diploid means that these eggs contain two sets of chromosomes. In sexual reproduction, the male either inserts his penis into the cloaca of the female or pierces her skin to inject the sperm into the body cavity. Only a few species seem to be ovoviviparous where the embryos develop inside the eggs and remain in the mother's body until they are ready to hatch. I left a very cool scientific fact for last, it's a special skill that some deloid rotifers possess. This skill is called anhydrobiosis which makes them capable of surviving long periods of adverse conditions after desiccation which is the state of extreme dryness. In this special anhydrobiotic state they lose almost all water in their body but can be reanimated within hours once water becomes available again. The longest well documented dormancy in this state for a rotifer was 9 years which is almost as impressive as tardigrades. They are not only resistant to desiccation but can also survive ionizing radiation due to their ability to repair damage to their DNA. Anyway, I should wrap this up now. I hope you enjoyed this informative educational episode. If you did and you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also hit the bell so you will be notified when I upload. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you all very soon in the next one.